We are going to start with the definition of the talent. What is it? Talent is a sum of person's ability and uh, his or her ability to learn fast in terms of talent management. Later we will describe you the definition of talent management, but right now I'm going to present you what are the main problems of uh, creating a global talent. Uh, first of all, mm, while my companies may have some talents uh, in the company, sometimes they struggle on finding the right person and they prefer to uh, hire someone from outside. But this is not a bad, this is not a good way to train yours, to uh, make your company a talent factory. Some companies um, uh, find out that insufficient pipeline of high potential employees to fill strategic management roles. So, and the process out of uh, synchronization with the requirements of the company. If the company will have someone, uh, someone in, uh, someone inside, so it's, it will be better to teach them the company requirements. And some companies think that uh, there is a need the talent can be obtained uh, by paying premium, reducing talent management to just a bureaucratic process. So many companies uh, lose business opportunities uh, to expand just because they cannot be they are not able to find the right persons to work. And right now uh, there is a problem of democratic shifts. Uh, as you know, in the 90s, like in China and in Russia, it was the, the, pre the period then People don't bear a, ch a child, and right now many companies uh, find struggles uh, to fill the positions because they don't want, they have no ability to find a person to work in because there is a lack of uh, labor force. And we, we want to show you one, one example. One example? No, it's uh, one London-based real estate financing development firm. Uh, they get a tent to did major reconstruction job in Berlin. Uh, but when it came out to find our people to work in, they found the same names of candidates appears on the same list. So they have no ability to find the right people to work on the project. And growth strategy huge on this position, but companies failed to groom people to lead them, just because they were not able to find the right people to work in. And then we are going to describe you how to how to deal with this problem, how to develop your talent in your company. Okay, thank you. So in today's global economy, companies must continually invest in human resources, uh, human resource employees. Human resource uh, leaders uh, work closely with senior management managers to attract, hire, also develop and routine, routine failure. So in competitive marketplace, talent management is the primary driver for organizational success. So what's a talent management? It can be described as a process of attracting and retaining profitable employees. As it's increasingly more competitive between firms and of strategic importance, uh, it, it can be said that it has come to know as a goal for talent. So to uh, help you better understand what's it, I'm going to show you maybe not you. Talent is what you should be doing 24-7. Well, at least in conjunction with making money, that is. Without your people, your organization wouldn't even exist. Actually, it would. But the offices would be pretty much empty. So, how do you manage talent? You first need to have a plan. Study the needs you have as a growing organization and figure out how you're going to get to where you actually want to go. Next, you need to select the right people for the right jobs. And make sure you don't make any mistakes. It'll probably cost you in the long run. 
Once you choose them, you'll have to introduce them to your workplace. Some people call this induction. After selecting comes the developing of your people. Make the effort to do this and you'll end up with a solid workforce. You do want that, don't you? Next comes monitoring their performance. But don't break down their necks. Energizing them is important too. Don't forget to do that. After all, a motivated employee is a productive one. You've heard of succession planning. What do you think that is? That's when you groom people to fit in bigger shoes at some point in the future. Keep cultivating your talent. It's a never-ending process. So there you have it. Six simple steps to managing your talent. So what do you do now? Well, silly, that's what we're here for. Send us a message from our... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Talent management help their organizations. Uh, first of all, it can increase. Uh, what can it increase? Uh, it's employee satisfaction, then uh, work and productivity, uh, learning effectiveness, and service levels. And uh, it can also reduce employee turnover and recruiting costs. So, hmm. it's all about talent management. And now, I will present you a part about. Uh, Thank you. Now every company in the world, big or small, has its own talent management processes. Take these multinational companies for example. These companies have been successful in their own respective industries, basically because they have the people. As people, we all know is the bread and butter of a company. However, as human beings, we do not just settle for good enough. We want to be the best. We aim to be the best. And this is what this com companies, PNG and HSBC, uh, envision. This is the same reason why they stood out from the rest of the companies. Because um, they invested in human resource management. And this success is, um, is shown through their, through their um, image, PNG being recognized as the number one leading, um, number one consumer products producer and HSBC as the world's local bank. Now, how did they do it? Well, as I said a while ago, they invested in human resource management, specifically building a talent factory. So what is a talent factory? Talent factory is having your talent management processes integrate both functional functionality and vitality. Functionality is a rigorous talent process that supports strategic and cultural objectives, while vitality is the emotional commitment by management that is reflected in daily actions. Now, these two values, or the key values that PNG and HSBC employ to take care of their employees and to produce talents that are globally com competent. As according to the text, talent factory is important as it allows the company to develop and attain key employees and fill positions quickly to meet evolving business needs. And so to summarize, again, a talent factory is the integration of functionality and vitality to produce experience and to hone potential employees. Now to get to know more about functionality and vitality, is, here is my code. Thank you. Um, now let's take a look at the theory behind the examples mentioned by Ronald and Anna. Um, how can a camp company know if they are on the right way to create global talent? Benedict and I are briefly going to explain two wheels called functionality wheel and vitality wheel. Um, those wheels are developed, were developed as a tool to describe the process of a company's talent, talent management. The wheels determine how well a company can or is able to prepare the high potential employees to fill strategic management roles one day. It is understandable for everyone that if you take a look uh, at the picture before this slide, um, that this system cannot work uh, if one part is missing or not performing well and a good interaction is needed between those parts so in order to produce talent. 
um, he conceived the functionality view um, of an imaginary company. The more an area is gray shaded, the better the company is performing in this category. Um, that means, of course, that every company has its own strengths and weaknesses. Um, here you can see that this company has, um, via, let's say, room for improvement in almost every part of this eight categories. Um, only the company's performance concerning assimilation and retention is satisfying, which indicates that the companies that the com indicates the company's one company strategy. Um, the, what the writers of this article imply by that is that this company sets the focus on achieving a better global integration, meaning that the company's that the company's goal is to be able to serve all customers around the world. Due to this goal, the requirements for these ambitions are obvious. The need to the need a talent pool that has no problem moving across borders, regardless if these are functional boundaries or regional boundaries or unit boundaries. In addition, they need to find and develop local talents wherever they are operating. Furthermore, the functionality view shows that deployment, development, rewards, and sourcing are the company's weakest spots. They handle the categories um, engagement and performance, ma performance management way better. The functionality view let us conclude that they may be able to find um, local talents and keep them satisfied and productive for a while. But on the other hand, the company has trouble to place people in key positions and move them across geographic boundaries. Thank you. So the second wheel is the vitality wheel. Uh, the vitality wheel shows to which extent different parts of the company are committed, engaged, and accountable. So it shows, as already mentioned, the emotional aspect people bring to a company which influences the talent development. This is the same company as beforehand because, as we already saw, these two wheels have to work together. So in this example, we have the executive team, the talent group, the human resource and talent staff, and line management. So it's divided into four parts, and we can see that in the top executive team, the company has a moderate performance in commitment, but they are not really engaged and accountable. We can observe a lack of performance and accountability throughout the whole company, which is a large weakness for the company. And the talent pool though, has large commitment and engagement and therefore a good performance in these sections. The strength of the talent stuff is clearly its commitment and engagement. And we have the same result for the line management. We can see that the company doesn't check on the process nor holds stakeholders accountable for the development of talent. Although all parts of the company show high commitment, the aforementioned accountability is weak throughout the company. And in terms of the top level team, the only strength is commitment. So as a company's talent management is only as strong as its weakest link, and vitality falls apart without mutual accountability, this leaves this company with a lot of work left, also because of engagement, which is crucial for working in t talent development, is low among the top managers. So identifying weaknesses is crucial and can help the company to clarify its talent development agenda. As an example, if this company wanted to grow in China, it could improve its relationship uh, with Chinese universities. To summarize these two wheels, the functionality wheel and the vitality wheel are useful tools for analyzing your company and find out which factors have to be improved um, and what are the strengths and what are, is the greatest weakness. In, to have a successful talent development, the performance of these wheels should be as high as possible and working together as good as possible. Because only if you, have, if you find a way to force your strengths and improve your weaknesses, 
and the interaction of these two fields work out, you will be able to be successful in developing talents. Thank you. Uh, as we discussed about how a company could develop global mindsets for its employees, let's see how the two big global companies, HSBC and PNG, do it. For HSBC, it created a system for talent pools. It's a system that track and manage the high potentials. Like, first, they will choose the, sorry. They will recognize high potentials within all the employees and assign them to different different pools, either it's regional pools or business unit pool. These pools are managed by the its own leaders, like regional leaders, business unit leaders. And when there are new assignments coming, the people in this group in people in this group will be selected initially for the assignments. And sooner or back, uh, sooner or later they'll be given positions across boundaries. Second, um, the leaders in each pool will maintain talent relationship dialogues with everyone in the pool. For, um, it's a good way for the people in the pool to address their development needs and concerns to their leaders. For new relationships, the dialogues may, well, the dialogue is intensive and will be available on the request. And for established relations, the dialogue might be taken like two or four times a year. And then, um, top managers in the company is considered to have worked in at least two very different cultures and environments. Many examples are given in the HBR, uh, in the journal, like a Brazilian works in the insurance affiliates in China and an American works in IT function in India. To do that is very, it's, uh, more expensive for the company because it's always easier and cheaper to hire someone local, but it's worth it and considered as an, an inve vital investment to achieve the goal global. And to build relationship on a personal basis, for example, they have a collective management conferences called twice a year, and in the conference, for the employee that could learn the company's like in policy or strategic objectives to around the world. And for the senior managers who attend in this conference, it's a good chance for them to communicate and share knowledge and ideas. Finally, established networks across countries. For example, a financial management manager in Hong Kong knows the financial manager in Mexico or in Brazil. They know each other, so they can hold regular off-site meetings to talk about relevant issues. And for PNG, it's slightly different than HSBC. Let's see what they do. First, they build a global talent supply chain management process. It's when the town managers, uh, the nationalities of the town managers are not important. Two examples are given, like uh, the China manager hire Chinese recruits, and unlike and like before, these recruits are considered to that they will work in different boundaries in the future. And small markets such as Taiwan are good for the new new managers. So after this, they can move to a middle markets and then bigger markets maybe globally. Second, offer formal training and development programs. Maybe the managers to external executive executive education programs. Like a marketing manager work in different brands and a finance manager work in different segments. For example, he might start in a financial financial analyst and then to audit and then to accounting. So he will know many sectors. Of course, tracking uh, all the employees in the company are tracked in a technology-based talent system. Like it, the system accommodates all employees in the company but are primarily used to track middle and upper managers. It, in response to what my group may share about talent factory, that is why PNG can always like, find a manager to send into a new market in a short time. Finally, pay attention to the effectiveness of recruiting processes. Like all the interviews in PNG are recorded, scored, and assessed. And after the like the interviewees are employed, these records will still be evaluated. 
and if like promotions doesn't go very well, lesson learned will be reviewed to prevent making the similar mistakes. That's our presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any question? No? Okay. Yeah, you're ready. Please come up. So it can be used only as uh, additional tooling finding employees. 
Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm going yeah. To company, oh, can you make phone, please? Oh. oh. And it's uh, HSBC. And first, um, I'm going to talk about how they managed uh, their uh, talent relationship dialogues. Uh, HSBC has a policy that leaders should try to maintain face-to-face conversations with each member in the pool at least two to four times a year and renew relationships uh, more frequently. Uh, we think that's very important to have face-to-face interactions uh, since uh, this uh, relationship uh, <coughs> build commitment between leaders and employees. Uh, but we, we think it seems uh, too little to only have interactions with two members a minimum two times a year. Uh, uh, it's hard to find the um, time interaction with all the members, but um, it's important to combine company needs and employees' needs, find motivation and satisfaction, and maintain talent within the pool. So we suggest that um, at least with more important members, these interactions is more often. Mm-hmm. The second comment about HSBC is about uh, how they link their business strategy with uh, their talent. Uh, HSBC have a clear understanding about uh, how their organization. Uh, would you please use my phone because uh, they are the video. They have a clear understanding uh, about the organization business strategy. And they're grabbing the game and themselves as the world's local bank. And meaning that they want to be global at the same time, guarantee local resource for customers. Uh, but to get their talent management to be successful, uh, they um, need to know how to support their, um, their strategy with their talent management. Mm-hmm. And talent management is not a straightforward role, it's a very challenging role. Uh, but uh, we think that HSBC do have a very clear plan about how the current management can support their strategy. We have a company-wide process of assessment, recruiting, performance, and career management, and leadership development. Um, at the same time, uh, adjusting some to local resources. Uh, but it seems very difficult to balance the global talent in the organization with the uh, the local talent in the organization is actually one of the most uh, common uh, reasons why talent management fails. <clears throat> we think that it's good that they have a global, consistent way of measuring talent management using standard rating scale and including performance as of the most recent three years. Uh, but uh, is it how do you see this ability to measure talent management? Do they have a clear view of what, uh, if the talent management, talent management is measured the right way? Mm. <clears throat> uh, the third comment is about the talent team. Mm-hmm. Uh, literally a huge variety about how companies uh, are um, to be uh, exclusive senior leadership and in an exclusive approach to everybody's in the world. Uh, 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 HSBC uh, has uh, limited uh, uh, to only senior uh, manager uh, and the important that employees are well what the tool system includes and what the tool is properly open for and what uh, different career goals that can be reached. Uh, therefore, uh, we have to have a specified definition of the career talent. Mm. Yeah. We think it's uh, benefit that, try to, that they have tried to integrate their approach 
along several uh, intermediates, but the full system can be very difficult to do in practice, uh, and it takes a lot of effort designing the system and identify um, uh, the talent. Uh, and the question is uh, the time balance between the process uh, filling in our, uh, our data is worth it? Will the information ever produce in the end? Uh, but we think it's good that uh, they have divided the talent to uh, pools among each local market so each local market can specify their own needs. Mm. Yeah. Now, Jeremy, I'm going to talk about the last. Okay, thing. Yeah, thank you for your comment. Mm.
And <clears throat> the manager might think that if I want to stay because of the company culture or the supervisor relationship, but in real, the uh, they probably think that the top factor are benefits and, com and compensation. So you never know if you don't ask the, uh, the employees. So uh, well designed to review the execute the possibility to use the information to decide how to adjust incentive to moderate key employees. And the company should do um, should this should do this kind of service more frequently. And here are some questions that companies should be able to answer. And the first question is who are the people the company should be uh, should focus on? And the company should focus on the top performers. Uh, so the company and they should focus on um, people with the potential to become top performers. Uh, but they should also focus on the people who added this appropriate value to the company. Um, <coughs> and the second question is, what can companies do to ensure that they have the right people in place? Um, the economy changes all the time, and the company is the company assess whether the people have skills needed to address the remote business. And they need to identify talent gaps and figure out how to fill them. And by doing so, a company can identify if they have the right people in the company. And the last question is, how do companies know whether the company is at the risk of losing key employees or whether they will be able to attract the top talent? And by understanding and knowing the procedure of people have of what it's like to work for the company, including the financial and non-financial entity of the company. Um, and the company can find out if they, um, if they are at risk of losing their key employees. Um, to summarize the all this question is like, we have to do the survey to get answers to uh, this question. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, we are just uh, right now we just commented the article about what it was missing in the article for us or what was wrong, that was what it was quote. And then uh, this part of the presentation is probably how to add some extra advice linked with talent management but not directly linked with uh, the two cases of HSBC and protecting a law. So first I'm going to present to you the importance of talent management. It's actually it sounds like logical for everybody, but it has to be right now. If you want to find uh, high potential employees and really skilled employees, which is really necessary for the company, obviously you have to focus on the talent management goals. Like it's here, you're going to find the people who are going actually to train until they're going to be really uh, strong human assets for the company. Then you have to reorganize uh, the plan and all the right staffing in order to find the right person in the right place for the right job. Because it's, it's I can find a really, really good talent somewhere, but if I just put him in the really wrong place in the company, it's just like it was a normal employee without any assets. So I just really have to study which talent I need for which place. And if I'm not finding it, just continue to, to look for it. And then uh, it's really important because if you know what you're looking for, your research, your recruitment research is going to be really more efficient than if you're just like looking for a guy and just listening to a lot of talents, people talking about them all the time. But if you know exactly what you want, you're going just to target inside the already really targeted group what you want. So that's just going to make your recruitment really, really more fa uh, faster, sorry, and really more efficient. And like it's going to be, uh, as I say, faster, it's going to be less expensive also because recruitment um, time are really expensive for a company. And then also, if you find a good person for the right place, for the right job, mostly this person is going to feel well in the company. And if he's feeling well, he's not going to go somewhere in another place. He's going to work for the company because he's going to fit in the good place. So that also uh, save a really good save of money for the company because they don't have to train someone else. And they don't have to do like again or recruitment stuff and everything. So then, the benefits is really linked with the importance of finding talent management. But if you're finding the good person in the good place, obviously there is going to have a really good self-improvement of the company, both for the employees and for the company. 
because everybody has uh, going to have a model or something, someone who just can uh, follow and who is going to just uh, lead and lead all the employees to, to do the right job. So there is going to have a really set improvement for the company and for the performance. And doing this uh, improvement, they're going to fulfill the goals really faster than usual. And so the lower recruitment, as I said before, and the tenants, if you are doing uh, right recruitment, are going to get responsibility and suitable position. That means you don't have to control them anymore, or you just have to control but less if you had just some, uh, a random employee. And they are going to have career development possibilities, so you just can already plan your, on your next, for example, uh, CEO in the, in the subsidiary, because you know that his talent is going to do a right job. He can um, candidate for this uh, cost, and you know you don't have to find someone else, and you always trust it. So, and talent job satisfaction, it's a happy employee is a good employee, an efficient one. So that's a bigger score. But it's really easy to talk, like, we have to find a good person at the right place, blah, blah, blah. But obviously difficulties, it's really hard to find this guy. If there was no like, multitude of them everywhere. You just have to find a good one in talent pool, but how to create talent pool, how to just find them. It's just not random guy in the street you can find. So it's hard just to say which one you need, and then which one you want, and if this guy actually wants to work with you. It's really hard to, be, to it's really hard to just to do all the same together and succeed in your recruitment. So, um, also, once the balance in your company, it's good, yeah, you succeed, you hire him, but what to satisfy him? Because he knows he's going to be a talent. All the talents the employees know they are. So, they're going to be really, really exigent, because if they're not, that's how they're going to go away and go in another company. So, you have to satisfy them on the short and long term, and it's going to be really expensive and really hard to do that. And finally, so how to select them? First, you can just find them, like I said, by making um, candidates and everything, recruitment, like basic one. And most of the time, 70% to, 70 of the time, they are going to come to you. But you just have to recognize him when you're going to see him. But the one, if you can build them, actually, there is everywhere, at least everywhere. If the thing there is a lot, he's going to be a talent, you can just build this talent. You can make an upgrade for the talent. It's harder, it's more expensive, but you can trust them after because you know exactly where you want to go. And other interesting is 10%. So, the idea is to select them. You can just select them by strategy. So, first, before starting to find them, you can uh, create a mechanism inside the company. Like, you know what you're going to find him, he's going to be engaged at the early beginning. Then, you can uh, look for all the talent management tool and just try to find it. And then when you get to have like several, but few of them that talents behind you, in front of you, you just have to choose really carefully the one. That's recruitment in my resource policy. And then you can also ask your employees, your employees are really part of the company and they know better sometimes than the CEO what you need for one uh, job or something. So you can ask first ex employee if you have a really good relationship, like not fired because of the fault or something, but someone who left. You just find five of your last good employees and ask them um, what, who, who I need for this kind of job. What was your talent in your job? So that's past reference. You can need uh, like a long-term employee in the company. What do you need now, like for example, to be manager? Which kind of manager do you need right now? And also you can ask a new starter because he's going to have a new point of view of the company. And what can we improve in this company you just enter it? Now we have the example of uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, they, they wanted to, to hire um, Okay, well, since Heineken sells uh, beer, which is like standardized product and they don't have much possi many possibilities to, to improve the product and in this way make the difference, so they need to, to find talented employees who are very creative in, in marketing in order to increase the sales of and popularity of the beer. So they, uh, what they done, they didn't do like, they didn't do uh, usual interview process uh, with, with the usual questions such as well, what is your weakness or 
uh, why we wanted to, to work for our company. So they did it uh, a little bit different and uh, we're going to show you the video. What's your management style? Passionate. Passionate. Passion. And what's your biggest weakness? Being stubborn. Stubborn. Stubborn, I think. Can you give me one reason why I should hire you? Because sports is my passion. I'm really passionate about football. Really like a football. When you are looking for a job or an interview, you look good. You feel good. By this campaign, uh, Heineken not only got a new uh, talented uh, employee, but also made other uh, employees uh, feel proud working for, for the company. And uh, we're pretty sure that the, for the next recruiting process, there's going to be way more applicants because of this. They all want to work for, for Heineken. So, to conclude, uh, what we have saw, uh, we have saw a lot of things in the article actually, really a lot of things. It was more like how the system can be, how official theory, or how to find the talent and everything. But the conclusion we really want to do is, it was like in the abilities and in everything, it's your talent is never at the place you're accept, actually expecting them to be. So you have to find a really an innovative way to find the talent and not, because actually when they saw talent in the official way to do it, it's going to be taken like really fast. So if you want really new talent by innovation, but also by efficiency, you just really have to make innovative way to just find them to make the difference. And that's how it, they're going to be, this guy, I'm quite sure, this guy is going to be really implied in the company. Because when you enter the company this way, you promise you never go out, but there is a force or something. 
So just be innovative and find the time to play well. Mm, very good. Yeah. Two D eight. Thank you. Any question? That's it? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you uh, for YouTube group. Uh, really present how to develop the global talent for a specific company. And some questions are raised by you. Uh, for example, uh, is this so important uh, to develop the global talent? Uh, if you look at uh, these two company, what's the same? Uh, character of these two company, but the same character. Uh, there is a modern company, right? They are modern company and what kind of industry? Uh, one is the banking, right? They want to serve, right, the customer, right, uh, in the worldwide place, right? Okay. And the other company, uh, PNG, right? Is a consumer, right? Consumer company. So, uh, you can find that um, why the global talent development process is very important. Because if you want to serve the customer in the far remote uh, country, right? Or the new market, okay, you need the global talent. Okay, to managing the foreign subsidiary, the foreign operation, right? And know how to expand, expand the market, right? The global market. Okay, so uh, it's an emergent for company to develop the global talent if you want to enter the new market, new market, especially this uh, servicing market or a consumer market. Okay, and because uh, many uh, marketing activity uh, need need an, an experience, right? An experienced uh, manager, right? To uh, uh, to help the company to enter this uh, the the new market. So, uh, if this new experience, uh, man, this uh, experience manager come from outside the company, maybe he will be uh, acquired, right? Maybe he will uh, leave the company after a period of time. Okay, so their experience cannot be uh, transferred, right? Cannot be retained and become the the human asset of this company. Okay, so. Really expensive and take time to develop a global talent, but it works. Right? It's worthy, right? It's worthy to develop a global talent because uh, it's uh, difficult for a company to enter the new market, especially in the foreign uh, market. So then, uh, this paper uh, really introduced to us first the process. What's the mechanism you need to uh, build up, right, to develop a global talent? So this paper introduced to us these two fear, right, to fear. The first is the function, right, continuity, and the second is the vitality, right? So these two uh, fear is very important. One is the, the basic uh, infrastructure, right, for a company to uh, develop your talent. Uh, it include you need to uh, recruit people, to hire people from the worldwide operation, right? Worldwide operation. Uh, no matter uh, where the, uh, this uh, subsidiary located, yeah, you need to find people from the the local, right? From the local, the worldwide operation, and then uh, you should build up the, some uh, uh, mechanism, right, to find out who will be a global talent. Right, from the the local right local operation, and then after you find them, 
you should provide some uh, training, right? Training for them, and help them to go, right? To go uh, global and help them to uh, walk across the uh, the boundary. Okay, so yeah, and you need to assess the performance, right? After uh, this one uh, go abroad and assess uh, his performance. Uh, and know what's uh, his interest and what's uh, his intention, right? And and what kind of different culture he need to uh, learn, okay? So yeah, you need to build up this kind of a function uh, nineties uh, process, okay? By means of the recruitment, selection, and development and deployment, right? And the performance of appraiser. Okay, and then you need to let him go through, go through uh, the process, right? Which in which uh, many uh, different department, uh, many different function, uh, many different country, uh, he can uh, go through, right? So by means of this, you can retain this guy uh, because he has built a very good relationship with many other manager, right? A manager from uh, many different uh, operation and country, okay? So all these are the functionality of the corporate development uh, process. However, however, this paper introduced to us, the more important process is the vitality, right, vitality, because the time management team need to uh, be involved, right, with the process. The HR, the HR executive need to uh, evolve, right, in this uh, process. And also, the, sub uh, the subsidiary uh, CEO also need to, uh, right, involve with this uh, process, right by means of this dialogue, okay? To uh, keep, keep the, the patient, the passion, right? The passion of this uh, process, right? Or you can build all the process and be copied by your computer. However, this kind of the passion cannot be copied, right? This kind of the interaction cannot be copied, right? By means of this interaction, this dialogue, and this uh, a kind of uh, uh, relationship building, right? Build up this relationship. You should take care of this uh, vitality process, okay? So it means that all the time management team, executive, need to take care Take care of the the senior, right? The senior level uh, global talent, and HR head, right? HR head need to take care, right? That the senior, the uh, senior level is subsidiary, okay? And uh, subsidiary CEO need to take care of the uh, the talent in the local operation. It means that. Many uh, rank of uh, executive need to get involved with the, all this uh, global development process. Because by means of this interaction and uh, relationship building, you can know who, who is actually your talent. Because different strategy, different organizational culture need different global talent. Okay. So how do you know? Not only by means of this uh, uh, functional process, but also by means of this interaction, right? Interaction between the senior labels manager, right? With the, this uh, talent pool, right? So the vitality is very, very important. Now, more and more, uh, uh, more and more 
uh, established multinational company want to enter the emerging market. Okay, however, they still uh, need to build up this uh, global talent development process, or they cannot be successful. However, PNG why can be successful in China because they build up this. Why SABC can be successful in the world market because they build up, especially in the emerging market. But uh, on the other side, more and more Asian multinational company, more and more emerging market multinational company, they try to enter this uh, the developed market, right? Like the U.S. market, right? U.S. market. Oh, it's more difficult. Also difficult. Yeah. Listen to the uh, fast con. What fast con? You know, this uh, very famous uh, uh, manufacturing company, right? Especially the IT, right? The IT and the uh, uh, 3C uh, uh, product um, manufacturing company. They try to build build a new factory in USA. Right? Think about this. More and more Asian multinational company, Samsung, right? They want to set up the marketing center, right? The R&D center, marketing center, right? In the, the U.S. Uh, market, and yeah, can they uh, be successful? Unless they, right, can build up this uh, global talent development project. To find, to find, to find the people who can really expand the market for them in that place, in that country, right? It's easier to enter the Europe, European market, right? but it's difficult to enter the U.S. market because U.S. market is the big whole market, the big whole market with the uh, uh, 300, how much? 300 million population, right? Yeah, really, really, very, very big market, right? But, uh, but for European market, it's the, the segment, right? The segment uh, market. So, it's more difficult. It's more difficult. So for it's a challenge for a multinational company in the uh, emerging country uh, if they want to expand the market uh, in USA, okay? Yeah, it, it's more difficult for them unless they are organic culture. See that organic culture, right? Can uh, can <laughs> attract, right? Attract. Uh, the U.S. Uh, manager attract the U.S. Uh, talent to work for them. So if you use the Samsung case, right, and to survey, to review their function, their function in this uh, functionality view, right? Functionality view, right? You can check, oh, what's the strength and the weakness of the Samsung? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I will stop the, uh, this uh, uh, lesson right, of the, this topic of the global talent development uh, here. And next week, we will focus on how to attract the local talent, local talent in, in the emerging market. Okay? Yeah, and then how to uh, uh, form the a global mindset okay thank you thank you for your first group uh, presentation thank you yeah stop here